Hey guys, it's Brian with Retired at 40. Fall is really setting in quick on us. Um, we're finally getting that much needed break from the heat. And when I think about fall, I think about the leaves falling off the trees, but not only leaves, uh, you're left with fruits and nuts and things that you can forage in the fall time. So not only are the trees dropping their leaves, they're also dropping seed or their fruit for the next year and oftentimes the seed or the fruit is edible on the tree. So whether you're a prepper or you're frugal or whatever your circumstances, there's lots and lots of seed to be taken advantage of pretty much through mid-August to mid-October. This is just what we've collected in the last couple weeks. These are my new discovery, which are shagbark hickory nuts. I'm gonna talk about those later in the video. These are one of my new favorites. We found tons of black walnuts. Just yesterday we found a ton of wild pears. And the kids have school off today, so today we're gonna to teach them how to forage. So it's been a really dry and kind of a rough year in Iowa this year. Uh, so the trees are not really producing, and the bushes and stuff are not really producing their fruits as, as good as they normally would. But we're gonna see what we can find today. So we found the best thing to do is to actually scout out locations and uh, mark them down. That way you kind of have a good idea of what you're in for when it comes time to actually pick up the fruit and the seeds. And we're actually in one of those locations that we've been scouting for a couple months now. All right, so the first thing we're picking up is uh, actually red oak and red oak was hit really hard and just all the oaks were hit real hard this year. It was really dry and we had an early frost and it, it just uh, it hurts their seed production. A lot of times the seed they put down is not great quality, but um, this one actually has a lot of seed on it still. But the reason we pick up red oak is you can actually make a, a flower out of acorns. And I have kind of a cart thing that's called a bag of nut and it actually picks up acorns really fast. So I'm gonna keep the talking to a minimal because it's really windy out today and you're pretty much just gonna get wind noise if I'm talking outside. So let's go pick up some acorns. The next one we're gonna do is a black walnut and it's, uh, it's still really windy out so I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna try and talk outside. But the wind is actually good because it knocks a lot of the loose seed off of the tree and onto the ground. So Iowa is one of the few states left that actually has a, a redemption for cans and bottles and stuff. So it's five cents per bottle here. So while we've been foraging for food, the kids have been foraging for cans and uh, making some money on the side. What'd you find? 25 cents. It's five cents. Hi. So here's what we're after. This is a shag bark hickory, and you can see why they call it a shag bark. If you look on the ground, this is what we're after right here. These green ones before they split open. Once those husks dry up, this brown will just pop off. So here's everything I've collected for hickory. So here are the different stages of the hickory nut. So when you pull them off the tree, or right when you get them, ideally you want them to be green like this. You can see the X at the top. That's where the shells are gonna dry up and they're going to uh, kind of fall apart. And then they're gonna kind of turn this brown color. And you'll see that the crack will actually start splitting even farther. And then when they're actually ready, this crack will get really defined and you can actually just split this right apart. So you're left with the hickory shells and then the nut, which actually has a hard shell on it as well. That's actually one of the reasons why the hickory is my new favorite seed to pick up because it's so easy to harvest and uh, it's so easy to process. In comparison with a walnut, it's way easier. The walnut leaves behind black, nasty stuff behind after that husk disintegrates. Um, unless you husk it first, which we'll get to later. And some of the other reasons are huge. I can't figure out why they don't commercially process hickory nuts yet. Hickory nuts are really dense in the nutrients that they have in them. They have tons of uh, good oils in them. 
They're, they're known to give you uh, energy that'll last throughout the day. The taste is really good. It's similar to a pecan. And from a prepper or a, a food preservation standpoint, these little things will pack 200 calories per ounce of nut. Probably part of the reason these have gotten so expensive. I've seen them up to $50 per pound for stuff that's been harvested. But you can imagine there's quite a few ounces in here and uh, quite a few pounds. A couple more things that I really like. You know that hickory is a very desirable wood to smoke meat with, but you can also use the shells so you can save the shells to smoke meat with. Um, the last thing that I really like about these, these will actually store inside the nut for two to three years. And even if you keep them laying in a dry location like this or stored in a dry location, they're going to store for a really long time because that husk is dry and it's not going to hurt anything. In fact, they'll get so dry that they'll just kind of fall apart. So you might be wondering what these big green balls are. These are from a hedge tree, and it's actually where the term uh, hedge post came from. They used to use that tree to actually make posts because they were uh, such a good wood that they would st stick around for a long time. I use them for, um, they actually repel bugs. So I, I use them for a lot of things, but you can actually just put them next to the seed and it'll keep a lot of bugs and, and uh, insects and stuff away. So next, let's talk about the benefits of walnuts and acorns, and then I'm gonna show you how to process all three of these. So walnuts are more of a pain for sure than hickory, but if you've ever had black walnut as opposed to the walnuts you buy in the store, there is absolutely no comparison. So these are the ones that I just picked in the video, and you can see that they're still green, and you ideally want them to be like that, and you can process them one of two ways. You can kind of just lay out a tarp like I have and just let the husk eventually dry up and fall off. Um, it does make a pretty big mess and it can stain whatever it's sitting on. So don't leave it sitting on concrete or something like that. So that's kind of what you're left with is just a bunch of dried up black holes. But you can see this is just the, uh, this is just the oils that come off of the walnut husk and it's, it's definitely an oil. It's pretty much like motor oil. So the other way you can process these is you can take the husk off when it's green or just barely, uh, just barely brown and dried up. This is actually called a walnut holer. It's all cast iron. Um, if you're interested in it, I can give you the link of where I got it from. I'm not real impressed with their customer service, but uh, the machine does work well. So you kind of get it in here. It'll spin it around, it'll pull that husk off, and then you're left with a gooey walnut shell, but eventually it will turn into, it'll dry up, and it'll turn into that. So once we have this, you have to be able to crack this nut, and black walnut shells are extremely hard. In fact, you pretty much have to put them in a vise or smash them with a hammer to, uh, to get them to crack open. Unless you have one of these, this is actually made by that same company, and um, it's pretty expensive. It's probably not worth it unless you're gonna do a whole bunch of them, but it does make the process. Once you get it adjusted, makes the process a whole lot easier because it'll take that and just turn it into uh, small pieces that can be processed from there. So then you're left with a cracked walnut with some nut meat in it. And the taste of a fresh black walnut that's just cracked is pretty unbeatable. Um, it's, if you don't like walnuts from the store, these have a completely different taste, just a, a way more bold taste, and they're not as chalky as walnuts would be from the store. Good for cookies, good for muffins, good for really anything you usually put walnuts in. So from picking them green off the tree to where you can actually process them, is usually about two to three weeks. You wanna make sure that that nut meat gets good and dry. All right, so next let's talk about acorns. So acorns to me are not quite as useful as the hickory nuts or the walnuts would be because to me, they're not quite as edible. Some people do eat them. Um, I do believe they're full of tannins though, so they can be really, really bitter. Deer love these things though, so if you're trying to attract deer or feed deer, they will go nuts for these. The most interesting thing I found out about these though is that the Native Americans used to use this to make flour, and uh, I'll actually put a recipe down in the description so you can check that out if you wanna try and make the flour. So how do you process all of these acorns? Well, the easiest way is to float them. And basically what floating does is it separates the good seed from the bad seed, and you can see almost all of this is floating. It's just been a bad year for, uh, for a lot of the oak, but 
it'll actually separate the good seed and the bad seed and it's also going to make the stuff that I picked up with the bag of nut it'll separate that so all the leaves and the stuff the sticks and stuff will will float to the top pretty crazy out of all that there was only like two or three that sunk that'll show you how bad our year for for seed was well there you go just a kind of a different video for me but uh just using nature's grocery store pretty much there's there's all kinds of stuff that can be had for foraging in the fall time in the meantime this is retired at 40 remember to live life simple and we'll catch you next week